In this scene, we'll learn how to add vect particles using our exposure effects simulation. We'll see how our particles follow the motion of the fluid when they are emitted from the same source. We'll use other advector data such as temperature to control the color of our particles. We'll then use the fuel data to clean up our particles via questions and actions, and finally, how the initial position of the particles affects the resulting advection. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D and another explosion effects test scene. It's a bit of a classic one. It's the uh, it's a Taurus with an explosion effects source tag. It's, uh, it's uh, tumbling around to add some velocity to our simulation, make it look nice and interesting. And then it's also adding some fuel and some heat, which is then being solved within the explosion effects object to give us this smoke and then resulting fluid simulation or fluid motion. So, of course, we know that that advection of properties, that movement of, or that transport of temperature, fuel, smoke, all of those things, velocity from one voxel to the next, all of those add up to the total fluid motion. But what we might not know is that the exposure effects object can actually transfer that data. It can advect that data onto particles. So the best way to see that is actually velocity. So we can obviously give the particles velocity and the exposure effects object becomes somewhat of a modifier. It actually modifies the particle positions and gives them a, a velocity. So first of all, we're going to need some particles. Let's emit from our torus and we can use a, a simple command, uh, emit from object. I've got it up here already. So emit from object is a quick tool and it allows us to just any object you have selected, it'll emit from that and set the emitter up. To polygon area. Now if I just press play now at, the, at zero, the particles are just firing off the torus at 150 units, which is of course default. Uh, you can see there if I just dropped it down to 50. And the simulation is having no impact on our particles at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the number of particles dramatically. I'm going to go to our display tab. I'm going to change the display um, editor display to lines. And then I'm going to change the color mode from just one single color to something that's going to give us a good visualization of our speed. So I'm going to change it to gradient parameter. I'm going to set it from age to speed. I'm going to put it into auto just so it can adapt to different fluid speeds. Then I'm going to change the gradient. I'm just going to load in the heat to preset like so. We can uh, collapse that now. And as you can see, when I play back now, we have some color particles, but of course they're all the same speed again we need our exposure effects object to advect these particles. Now by default, this is turned off. And if we go to our exposure effects object, you'll see a tab called advection. Now this is not dealing with the advection of the channels, it's dealing with the particle advection. So if this checkbox is active, advect particles, pass these data to our particles. Let's test that out. And you'll see we have a really nice looking inherited particle velocity from our simulation. So you can see how, how really quite cool that can be. This is great for creating things like embers. Having the uh, fluid drive particle motion is in this really organic and beautiful way. So what's really going on here is that wherever there's a particle, it, where it's intersecting a voxel, if it's inside a voxel, um, and these sliders are set to above zero, it will multiply that value onto the particle. So it's essentially going to set the value of the particle. So say we have uh, velocity, it's going to set it every frame uh, 100% like so. If I actually turn off all, all, uh, all of these parameters and just zero literally everything out, our particles will not go anywhere. They'll just use their original speed. If I increase the velocity to say 50, almost 50%, you'll see it has an impact, but it's not completely taking over the particles. And so the particles could actually escape this simulation somewhat. And you'll see some of them are actually doing that below. Uh, if I increase it to 100%, it is going to set exactly the same speed as the simulation. And they're going to follow along really carefully with that. Like so. And it's really great because you can see all the vortising and things like that. A lot of fun to play with. Now the other settings that we're not actually seeing visually at the moment, um, like smoke and fuel and temperature. Let's put those back to 100%. Uh, UVW is unnecessary at the moment. What we'll do is we'll go to our display tab of our simulation. We'll just take a quick look at temperature. Now, temperature obviously has this uh, this same gradient. It has this uh, heat to gradient, if you like. If I go to our torus, uh, sorry, our emitter from the torus on our display tab, 
we change the parameter that we're displaying to temperature, if we have any temperature in our simulation, it should now display as this gradient. So if I go to temperature, I'm going to turn auto off and I'm going to set it to one because it can only be between zero and one. I'm going to hit play and you'll start to see that the color of our simulation is actually matching our particles now. So where they are blue, that is the least temperature and where they are red is the highest. Now, of course, we can't see the red ones because they're in the center here. So we just need to hide our temperature display. We can just either turn off the mode there and you'll get that visual representation in the particles of our temperature. So that's really cool. That's not just advecting the velocity, it's advecting the uh, temperature of the smoke, all of these other things. And we can just check out, uh, let's do smoke. Also smoke, there we go. Now, of course, the smoke is a little smoother. So there we go, we get a, a much more gradual gradient. And so there are what this is telling us is that there aren't many voxels that are completely saturated with smoke in this simulation. Now down here, there are a few because they're probably at their highest values. But you get that lovely motion. Let's have a look at fuel, which, which uh, parts of the simulation are saturated with fuel. And there we go, we can see some of the, the red parts are, are fully saturated particles with, with full fuel at the very beginning, and then they obviously burn and, and generate that kind of stuff. So this is great. We are advecting data from our simulation to our particles. And you can see here, we've got a bunch of zero fuel particles. Now, the advantage of this is, of course, we can use this data to control our particles. So I'm going to use a, a question setup to actually kill particles that don't have much fuel in them. Uh, so essentially, we can clip this simulation we can reduce the number of particles and have them die off essentially with the fuel. So currently they just continue on because they've got velocity inheritance and all that. So what I'm going to do is go to the question tab of the emitter, add a question. And currently it's set to the default, which is this, uh, this age calculation. We'll just leave the action one open here. Uh, what we're going to look at is we're actually going to look at physical data. So we need to go and change the question type. We're going to ask the particles do you have this data and do you match this question? So this is going to be fuel because we're looking at fuel at the moment. And essentially I'm going to say that if you are less than 0.5 fuel, do something and do an action. So we're going to add this action in. And for now we could change the display only, but let's, let's actually change this to a direct action. And the direct action we want is to uh, change the life of the particle. We, we want to uh, kill the particle. Sounds a bit cynical, but <laughs> it's what it's going to do. So now if this question is uh, uh, satisfied, so if the if the value of fuel on these particles is less than 0.5, it will just kill the particles. And in fact, you're noticing it actually kills them immediately because there's very few particles that have that 0.5 value. If I reduce that threshold down a little bit, we'll have some particles surviving a bit longer, all the way down until we've got a really low clipping value. And there we go. So now we've got a really fiery representation of our particles. They're only following the fuel that is above that 0 0.02 value. And you're getting this really nice particle motion. Okay, so let's get rid of that question and action. Let's go back to our emitter and let's just check out uh, smoke again, like so. And of course we can change this gradient. We can have any, uh, all, all different kinds of gradients. Uh, let's go for the, uh, just let's try one that has a really harsh cutoff. It'll look a bit strange, but there we go. You can see that you can create some really cool effects with this once we have the data inside the particles. Not sure about that color scheme, but there we go. Okay, so let's reset that to, uh, well, let's go back, let's undo and go back to that hot gradient. Uh, and let's go back to a, a one that's going to take a different property that's not actually advected onto it from the exposure effects. And we can actually color them by their direction. That's also an interesting way to do this. So as you can see, uh, as the direction changes, we get this nice looking flow. So of course, we actually have data that exposure effects recognizes now on the emitter itself. And we can do some really interesting things with this. So we can actually do something that's actually going to be a bit of a, a loop, a bit of an iterative thing, where we can actually send the data back into the exposure effects calculation. So this is a bit of a trick, uh, but I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to put our particle display back to squares, and I'm going to reduce the number of them down a touch. I'll just go to half. 
like so. There we go. And I need to display our fluid again. So let's turn on OpenGL, fuel and smoke at the same time. And there we go. So of course our particles are being advected. They're moving around the simulation here. But what would happen if I added an exposure effect source tag to our emitter? Because of course that can uh, accept exposure effect source tags. So add that on there. And we've got these multipliers here. Now um, we can leave the color on for now, uh, but it's not going to be imparted into the simulation. The important ones are the smoke, heat and fuel. Now, of course, what we'd normally do if we just had the emitter as a source in our scene and there was no advection going on is that we would go to the extended data tab. We'd go to the physical data tab and then we would set some fuel, smoke and temperature values for our particles. And then that would be returned into the exposure effect simulation. However, because we are advecting them, they actually have that data already from the sim and we can return it via the emitter. So we've added this tag and you'll see our simulation there. Now, if I hit play, you'll start to see we get a very different looking simulation and it actually is adding more detail to our simulation. It's getting a little over thick, a little bit weird, but it's kind of a cool effect that we are looping in the data that we're getting from the exposure effects object. Uh, let's drop the let's drop the smoke to zero percent. We don't want to add any more smoke into our simulation. That's a bit weird. Um, we can add more heat and perhaps more fuel. Definitely more fuel, actually. Uh, we can add more curl if we wanted. That's just going to be brand new uh, random motion. And you can see the fuel now is really surviving a lot longer because we are from each particle that has some fuel on it inside the from the exposure effect simulation we then send it back to the exposure effect simulation from the particle that inherited it and then the loop goes on and on and on so of course you want to be a bit careful because this might get out of hand very quickly but it's a really nice way of getting creating these really interesting sort of detail effects and adding detail to your simulation really exaggerates the uh, the vorticity there Okay, so one last thing we'll look at is actually color. Now, of course, the particle color, I'm going to turn, I'm going to delete that tag for now. Go back to our emitter, go to the display tab, and we have this color, this gradient color at the moment. Now, I'm going to want the color to be inherited from our simulation now. So I'm going to set it to single color. Let's go to our exposure effects simulation, and I'm going to turn on the color solve to make sure that we're actually adding color to our simulation. Go to our tag. And we've got color coming from the object. So that's this object here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set a custom. No, no, I'm, I'm going to change the color of the object. Let's go to the basic tab of the Taurus, change it to automatic. And then let's just change this to a nice and vivid, full, full saturated red. Go back to our um, exposure effects simulation. Go to the advection tab and make sure that color is set to 100%. Okay, so hit play now and all of a sudden you'll see that we are seeing red particles and black particles. So red is where the highest value of color is and black, of course, is where the color is. There is no color data yet. So, of course, we're not seeing that at the moment in the exposure effects object itself because we are displaying fuel and smoke. Let's change it to color and there we go. We can see our particles inheriting that. Now, of course, that's not a very interesting looking color. So let's... um. Let's reset the display of our of our torus and let's actually use a shader to color our object. So I'm just gonna drop a shader on. I'm just gonna drop a noise. Let's create a few different, a couple of different colors. I'm gonna make it quite high clip, high contrast. Uh, let's go for a yellow and a blue. We should probably end up with some green smoke. I'm gonna go for high saturation on those. Make them about, I'll leave them at 100% for now. Now you'll see, as I emit, uh, I mean, it gets mushed up very quickly, as you can see. So I'm going to increase the scale of this quite a lot, and I'm going to have them clip. So we get really sharp transitions between the colors. There we go. And you can see they're diffusing very quickly, but you can see it's being imparted onto the particles as well. So this is all being inherited from the particles, like so. And then we're getting that rather mushy looking color at, at the end there. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, let's clear that shader out. In fact, let's just set the color mode to object again, and let's go back to our exposure effects object. Uh, we're gonna turn off the color now. We're not gonna advect any color to our particles, and I can actually even turn off that color solve on the 
the exposure effects object. So back to advection. Now there's a couple of modes here. We haven't looked at the, the mode dropdown. Now the set mode, like I said earlier, will uh, multiple use these multipliers every single frame it will essentially take over whatever value is there already it will set the value to exactly what is in the voxel so whether it's velocity temperature fuel smoke etc it will set that exactly whereas add will only add if it's higher so it's going to keep adding and adding and adding which of course is going to create some very weird effects such as an acceleration so you can see it's now creating an acceleration and it's very, very fast away. So we could drop the velocity impact and it's going to have sort of, it's going to have an effect, but not a huge effect. And then they'll just keep adding and moving away. So generally you'll leave that on set mode and you'll generally leave these quite high usually, like so. And the last thing we're going to look at on the advection of these particles, the transfer of this data to these particles is groups. So we can assign different groups to our emitter. Jump to our emitter in the groups tab and we're going to, create two groups. I've just held con control or command when you add create and add group and it just means that we stay in the emitter itself. Because I actually want to change the mode at, at the moment we just we're uh, randomly assigning particles groups so we'll get an even number of both groups. I want to have a bit more control over that so I'm going to go for use gradient and then I'm going to add a knot and then essentially anything to the right of this knot will be our second group and anything to the left will be our first group. I hope I haven't got that the wrong way around. Let's change the colors so that we can actually see this nice, nice. Hit play and there you go. We've got an even number of the groups because they are, um, the knot is on that side and there we go. The second group now is the dominant group. And if I go to the other end, the other group, the, the blue group, particle group one. So now if I just assigned one of these groups to our exposure effects advection, I will go for group two. You'll see that now blue is completely ignored by our exposure effects object. So this is just another level of control. And of course I can change the amount of the red particles that we're seeing like so. And we're getting that nice clustered um, simulation, but of course the blue ones are being ignored and they could be taken over by another modifier perhaps. So um, another thing to look at actually just before we end is that we can change the emission type. So I could say we could have a shot emission. So we could just at the very beginning of the simulation, we just, um, we, we're going to add all of our particles at the beginning of the simulation and just have them adve advect instead of continually adding them as a source. So you might want to do this if you animate your source down to nothing and it'll stop emitting on the object itself, but there's other, other reasons as well. So I'm just going to delete those groups for now. So we've got all particles advecting. Let's go to our display and make it that nice speed-based display. That always looked quite nice. There we go. Let's change it to lines again and let's increase our number dramatically. So. We're sh we're, with a shot mode, we're just adding particles at the very beginning and then until they're advected away, until they're moved away, they'll stay around the velocities here. And you'll see they move up and eventually they'll all get caught by the velocities, the buoyancy velocities, and up they go. Okay, and now the other way, I, I mentioned earlier that it's the best way to see this advection is to actually emit from the same object, but we don't have to do that. We can actually use, say, a spherical emitter. And I'm going to take the speed away from this spherical emitter just so that they stay static wherever I emit them. So like there, I'm going to change it to rate mode so that it's it's always emitting like so. And essentially, it won't actually advect the particles until they are within that adaptive bounds. It won't, there's no data to come along until the fluid arrives and moves them around. So this is cool if you want to create an effect where um, your particles are static in a scene. Let's Let's try that now actually. Let's move them over here where your particles are static and then all of a sudden they're blown away by the fluid. You'll see that it comes in there and then they are now part of that advection. All right, so that is particle advection in exposure effects. And as you could see, we can create some really interesting and beautiful effects. And it's a really good one for creating things like embers, uh, extra debris in explosions, things like that. And there's a lot of fun to be had with it.